A special type of dimension structure is called the snowflake. We use the snowflake structure when we have a hierarchy that requires multiple dimension tables. There's many reasons why, why we might choose to do this. Now, of course, earlier we said that having a denormalized structure was better because it reduced the number of joins and thereby reduced the, the, um, the time required to uh, return a query result. But depending on how you're planning to use a dimension, using a snowflake isn't necessarily bad. For example, in relational reporting, it has the potential to slow down your query performance. But if you're using this particular structure only for the purposes of building an analysis services cube, then that, um, that snowflake really only impacts you during the processing of the database, which is not uh, something that the user would be aware of. And in terms of query performance, there really is no difference because the query would be going against a completely different structure. So one reason I might choose to use a snowflake dimension is when I have fact tables that use different levels of granularity. For example, I could have my sales fact table where I'm tracking information by product. And so the key column in my fact table would join to the product key in the base level table here, which would be dim product. But maybe I have my budgeting or my sales quota fact table is tracking at the category level, in which case I have a product category key in my fact table and I want to join specifically to the product category dimension table. And so by structuring these tables separately instead of one big flattened denormalized table, the snowflake structure allows me to more efficiently set up my relationships between tables, between the fact tables and the dimension tables, when I have different grains or granularity. Another reason I might choose to use snowflake dimensions is when I'm using multiple sources to um, provide data to these target, des uh, target tables. So for example, maybe I have one system that's tracking information at the individual product level, but maybe I have a completely different system or maybe a spreadsheet where I'm tracking the categories and I'm using the warehouse to bring this information together. My ETL process is greatly simplified when I can do a one-to-one -one relationship between the source and my dimension table in the data warehouse. So your design of your structure will really be dependent on how it's being used and the processes you need to implement to maintain your solution. The ideal, of course, is to keep everything in a single dimension table, but when necessary, it may be appropriate to separate the hierarchical information into separate tables, as you see here. Whether you're using a single dimension table or a snowflake architecture, you still want to spend some time thinking about the design of hierarchies. Hierarchies are what allow the user to analyze data at different levels of summarization. They give us the drill down and drill up paths. So as you can see in this slide, for example, we have time represented with calendar year, and then we can drill down to quarter, and then we can drill from there into month and see successive layers of detail as we drill down. You can create a hierarchy within your table just within a denormalized star schema dimension, and we saw that in the previous slide with the dim timetable, where for every particular date we can track the month and we track quarter and track year. So you could have multiple instances of the same year scattered throughout the same table, and that's okay. The fast uh, retrieval time that we get outweighs the redundancy that is added to the table. This is sometimes hard for DBAs who are new to uh, data warehouse design to get accustomed to. On the other hand, you may choose to use a normalized snowflake approach. A third option is to use a table where we have a self-referencing relationship. We call those parent-child hierarchies in our analysis services design. We'll talk about this structure more later in this module. But basically, the difference between our denormalized or our normalized snowflake dimension as compared to the self-referencing relationship is the number of levels that we would maintain within a hierarchy. When we're using the star schema or snowflake design, we know how many levels there's going to be. 
For example, if I'm tracking year, quarter, month, and date, then I have four levels and that's all there will ever be. Whereas in a self-referencing relationship table, I have a foreign key relationship uh, in one column to a primary key column in the same table. This gives me a much more flexible structure and a variable number of levels depending on which path that I'm traveling. So the number of levels within the hierarchy is determined by the data in the table and not by the structure of the table itself. So a common example of a parent-child hierarchy would be an organizational chart where we have uh, the CEO at the top and then various branches as we travel from department to department we may have various levels of hierarchy within different departments. The parent-child hierarchy allows us to manage this hierarchy much more easily than trying to build a denormalized structure to accommodate all the possible levels that we might need. An important part of a dimension is the primary key. That might be a single column or uh, composite columns. The primary key is used to identify unique records within the table and also to relate it to the fact tables. It becomes the foreign key in that fact table. One option for the primary key is to use something called a business key. And that's really just a new name for the primary key that's coming from the source table. However, a best practice in data warehouse dimensional modeling or star schema design is to create a surrogate key. This helps us solve a number of problems. For example, if you're using multiple sources to bring data into the same table, for example, I may have um, products that I sell standard across uh, my entire organization versus specialized products where the source of that information comes from a different source, but I want to bring them together into a common product table. I run the risk of finding duplicate keys. And so if I assign a surrogate key, then I can safely bring in those records into this table. And I would still use that business key in the table so that I could uniquely identify them and track them back to their source tables, but I can allow them to coexist peaceably within the same table. Also, if I have multi-value business keys, this gives me a better way to consolidate that information. In other words, if I'm trying to um, set up a foreign key relationship in my fact table, then I can minimize the size of my fact table by using an integer-based one-column primary or foreign key in the fact table that joins to the single primary key in the product table and not use up all of that space unnecessarily in my fact table. There's another situation that um, is best suited for using surrogate keys, and that's for slowly changing dimensions. That allows us to track dimension history, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But for now, your key concepts for dimension design are the star schema structure, or as a, as a denormalized structure, your star snow, or your snowflake structure, in the case of having to normalize, creating hierarchies if necessary, and then establishing your surrogate key as the primary key for your dimension table.